and mighty ruler, the King of all the earth. We bow before your throne. the name of the Lord. Father, we are grateful for your faithfulness. We honor you for bringing us together again to hear your word, for us to be inspired, for us to profit with. Please speak to us, inspire us, anoint your words in our mouth again. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God for bringing us together today to be able to listen to the Word of God. Today we are going to talk about the Word of God. The Word of God. And let's open our Bible to the book of 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 15. The Bible told us in the book of First Timothy, chapter 4, verse 15, about what his word is. He says, meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them, that you may progress, that your progress may be evident to all. That your profiting may be evident to all is what the book, uh, the King James Version says, the Word of God. And uh, the Word of God, by definition, is God Himself. Nothing changes from God's Word to Himself. The Word of God is God Himself. Now, if God what is God himself, then it means that God's word is God. And uh, if God's word is God, then uh, any kind we encounter is what? There definitely has to be a change. Now, we will look through John chapter 1. Gospel according to St. John chapter 1. The Bible makes us to understand from verse 1. Say, in the beginning was a word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. So, Anytime God speaks, you hear his word. Or anytime you hear his word through his servants or his prophets, his sons, as you are hearing today, God is speaking. Now from the scriptures we read, it says, in the beginning was the word. Here he was talking about Jesus Christ as being God himself and existing before the creation of the world or the earth. And so everything that God created came through the word. Now, this day we are going to talk about the word of God and what the word of God will do for us. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, the word of God, as we have said, is God himself. From the scripture, we are told that there was nothing God made that was not made through the word, or by the authority of the word. 
That means when he created in Genesis chapter 1, he created and said, let there be light that was light. When he said, let the firmament come to place, it took place. Then he created man and then put his breath inside there. Man became a living soul. And then, of course, the, the purpose of God for man was to be like him until man rebelled. But thank God for the word himself that came in John chapter 3. That, I mean, God sent his only begotten son and that same word became alive again. And then we receive him. When we receive him, according to the book of John chapter 1, verse 11 and 12, we become his sons, we become his daughters. And so whatsoever God himself intends to do, literally does, he gave us authority to do it even before Jesus Christ went to be with his father. Praise the name of the Lord. So God wants us to prosper through his word. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 15 that we read. God's plan and purpose is that we should prosper through the word of God. Let's read that book of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15 again. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. Yeah, the, the, the King James Version would have been better, wrong, but I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to it, unto them, that your progress may be evident to all. King James Version will say, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them, that your profiting may appear unto all. Your profiting. Are you called a minister of the word of God? You need to teach the word of God, preach the word of God, and make sure that the word of God profits through you. You put the word of God in the heart of men. You teach the word of God to shape lives of people so that your prophecy will not just appear to men, we appear to God as well. And that is why it told us in the word of God that we must meditate upon the word of God. It told Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verse 5 and 8. He told Joshua, Joshua, it's time for you to become the leader of my people. But don't be afraid. Don't be fearful. You will become prosperous. You will have good success if only you meditate upon the word of God. If only you rely on the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And so he told Joshua, Joshua, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. In verse 8 it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate upon it day and night. Praise the name of the Lord. So, man of God, child of God, children of God, the word of God is for you and I to meditate upon so that our profiting will appear unto all men. We are supposed to do what? To meditate, to read, and to allow it to prosper in our hearts, in our mind, in our ministry, so that our profiting will appear to all men. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, in the book of Hebrew chapter 4, verse 2, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2, it says, For indeed the gospel, which is the word of God, the gospel, the word of God was preached to us all, as well as to them. But the word which they had did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who had it. So number one, for us to profit with the word of God, it must be mixed with what? It must be mixed with faith in our hearts. Faith is what? Is the main, main thing that the word of God requires for it to germinate. Faith must what? It must be mixed with faith 
in our heart. Remember the word of God in Romans 10, verse 17. It says, faith cometh by what? By hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we must allow the word of God to mix with faith in our heart. The word of God will increase when we keep hearing it, when we keep meditating upon it, when we keep studying it. In, in Acts chapter 6, verse 7, the Bible makes us to understand that the word of God was preached. The word of God in the heart of, of the believers, in the heart of the, the ministers of the Gospels, in the heart of the priests, they had it. It says, and the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith through the word of God. It was it was it was preached, it spread, and multiplied the disciples. The word of God is to bring about increase. So faith is number one thing that will cause that word to do what to fulfill what it is meant for to do faith. Remember in chapter 3 that it was the preaching of the word of God that brought faith in the life of the apostles when, when the lame man by the beautiful gate, when he did what? When he received his healing. Peter said faith in the teaching and the preaching the word of God in the name of Jesus Christ has made this man whole that you can see. Praise the name of the Lord. Faith in the word of God. Faith through the preaching of the word of God. Hallelujah. Number two, the word of God will bring hope. The word of God will bring hope. Are you sick? Are you deceased? Uh, is your life has become a catastrophe that nothing can be written or said about it. The word of God is the, is the key thing. In um, Romans chapter 10, verse 17, Romans chapter 10, verse 17, when it says we should keep teaching the word of God, we should keep hearing the word of God, and then it will bring about faith, to bring about testimony. Now, Psalms 119, Psalms 119, verse 49. Psalms 119, verse 49. Let's hear what Psalms 119, verse 49 has to tell us. Psalms 119, verse 49. And I read, it says, Remember the word to your servant upon which you cause me to hope. Remember the word to your servant upon which you cause me to hope. That is David reminding God about his word. Remember the word you gave to me. Remember you said to me, has God given you a word at a particular time? Hope in it. Remind God. Pray and it will bring it to pass. Hope come through the word of God. Hope come through the word of God. And uh, when you let your ears, your heart, your mind, you are attentive to the word of God, there will be what? There will be hope. Whatever situation that you might be in, praise the name of the Lord. And then in Psalms 119 verse 114, David said, You are my hiding place and my sheet. I hope in your word. You are my hiding place. You are my shield. I hope in your word. Brethren, do you hope in God's word? Are you attentive to his word? Hope, your hoping in his word will bring testimony. Hoping in his word will bring great uh, increase. Hoping in his word will bring prosperity. Hoping in his word we 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 bring increase. Open in his word, we heal you of your disease, your afflictions, and whatsoever thing 
that might be a problem to you. In Philemon, I'm sure many of us might not know where Philemon is. Philemon is in the New Testament. Praise the name of the Lord. Philemon. Uh, Paul was writing to Philemon. And then let's hear what it has to say. Philemon chapter 1. Let's read verse 5 and 6. It says that the sharing of your, of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in your love. We have great joy and consolation. We have all in your love because the heart of the saints have been refreshed by your brother. Your brother, that is Philemon. We have had what he's been doing. We have had the encouragement he has given to the people. It is through the word of God we hear about it. That there was a servant who was with what? A brother who was with Philemon, who was with Paul, who was with the brethren. And then through him, it has brought encouraging men. We receive what? We receive hope. We were blessed. Number three. The word of God carries joy and brings joy to us. The word of God carries joy and brings joy to us. And that is why David also said, the word of God has become his necessary food that he eats. It carries joy. Remember when the word of God was preached in the book of Acts, the Bible, chapter 19, verse 20 through 22, the Bible makes us understand, understand that so mightily grew the word of God and it prevailed. The word of God grew mightily and prevailed. It brought joy. In the book of Acts chapter 8, Philip went to Samaria. The Bible said that he preached Christ. Because Philip preached Christ, what happened? The Bible said those who are sick were healed. The oppressed were delivered. Their victims were what? Were relieved. They were freed from the oppressions of demon. The Bible said, so mightily grieved, I mean, that there was great joy in that city. In your city, in your street, in your town, in your place of work. Are you teaching the word of God? Are you preaching the word of God? Are you living the word of God? Remember, the word of God is God himself where we started. So what you do by teaching the word of God, by preaching the word of God, by living the word of God, is that you bring hope to people, you cause faith of people to be increased, you cause the word of God to profit, to bring healing, deliverance, success, breakthrough, that people who have joy, praise the name of God, meaning you are carrying, you are carrying God wherever you are going. In Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, Nehemiah chapter 8 verse and then the same thing uh, we have read from from Philemon verse 7 Philemon is just one 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 chapter verse 7 it also says that joy came we have great joy beside the fact that they had consolation they had great joy praise the name of the Lord so Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 make us understand that the joy of the Lord is my strength Nehemiah 18, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Every word of God is God's breath. Praise the name of the Lord. All of God's word is what is God's breath. Hallelujah. And it's profitable to meditate, for healing, for teaching, to reprove that you and I will be thoroughly furnished. Through the word of God, there is wisdom. Through the word of God, there is what wisdom. James chapter 1, verse 5, say that we must do what? That if there remain wisdom for anyone, we should do what? <clears throat> we should ask him. And he will do what? He will give liberally. And he told us that those who did not ask in faith, he says they are like wave of the sea. They are like wave of the sea. So if you don't ask in faith, you are like wave of the sea that is being blown here and there. And because 
the word of God is strong, is powerful, is sharper than any two edged It can go into divisions of bones, of marrow. It can bring about healing and cause deliverance for the captives. The word of God, what will happen with it? It brings profit. Let's see what we have to, to, to read from the book of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Talk about Jesus Christ as a child being given to us. And as he grew, in verse uh, 7, he became a son. In chapter 11 of Isaiah, verse 1, 2, and 3. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1, 2, and 3. We are made to understand that it is through wisdom that Jesus Christ will become the administrator, the government or governor upon which his shoulder, the administration of every nation will be what we will, will be we will, will be will be administered. And so through the word of God, there will be what? There will be good governor. There will be peace in our home. There will be peace in our family. Isaiah 55 verse 1 make us understand we must buy this word so that we can live peaceably. He compared it to water. He compared it to milk so that we can be sustained. And I encourage you, beloved, let us make sure we call the word of God to do what? To prosper in our heart so that there will be testimony, so that there will be healing. And the only way which we can make the word of God to prosper through us is by receiving the word. Ah, Jeremiah said, I took this word and I chew it. When I chew it, there was transformation that took place between my mouth and my stomach, and then it brought result. This reward, this word of God will make you. I want you to receive Jesus Christ, his word, as the only begotten of the Father, as your Lord and Savior. So please pray this prayer after me. If today you want to receive God's word, the only begotten of the Father, as your Lord and Savior. Say, Jesus Christ, today I receive you as my Lord and my personal Savior. I want you to come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my God in the mighty name of Jesus. From today, I live a life of sin. I receive power and grace through your work to live holy, to live according to your dictate and your instruction. And from today, I become your son. I become a new being in the name of Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I decree as your children are receiving you as their Lord and personal Savior. Lord God, I ask that your peace and personal understanding will come upon them. Your presence will be their portion and they will serve you all the days of their life. Daddy, I decree healing. I decree deliverance. I decree favor, breakthrough that comes through your world in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name. Worship and honor you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.